Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation at Shelter Rock. I'm Richard Bach. I am a six-decade member of this congregation, and it is my honor and privilege to welcome back to Shelter Rock the Reverend Nick Filson, minister of our congregation at Atlanta, Georgia. Nick, many of you remember, was a member of our choir for many years, our tenor soloist and our section leader, and it is so heartwarming to have him back here as our minister for today. I've selected a opening words from the Reverend Dr. Hope Johnson. She delivered these words at the 2013 General Assembly. We are one, a diverse group of proudly kindred spirits, here not by coincidence, but because we choose to journey together. We are active and proactive. We care deeply. We live our lives as best we can. We are one, working, eating, laughing, playing, singing, storytelling, sharing and rejoicing, getting to know each other, taking risks, opening up, questioning, seeking, searching, trying to understand, struggling, making mistakes, paying attention, asking questions, listening, living our ancestors, leave living our answers, learning to love our neighbors, learning to love ourselves, apologize and forgiving with humility and being forgiven through grace, creating the beloved community. We are one. Just a little young bloods for you in the morning here. Love is but a song we sing. Fear's the way we die. You can make the mountains ring or make the angels cry. Though the bird is on the wing and you may not know why. Come on, people now. Smile on your brother. Everybody get together. Try to love one another right now. This Unitarian Universalist congregation welcomes you no matter where you are on your faith journey, whether a believer, doubter, questioner, you are welcome here. Ours is a community where values, which values and celebrates diversity. We believe that we need not think alike to love alike. We welcome you to join us as we seek to build a more just and joyful world. If you are a visitor, stop by our welcome desk in the main lobby. If you are with us online, visit our website to learn more about Unitarian Universalism and the Unitarian Universalist Congregation at Shelter Rock. 
After our worship service, you are invited to our coffee hour, which is held in person in our social hall, as well as online. Let us worship together. Please rise in body and spirit for our words of affirmation. The words are on the screen. Love is the doctrine of this congregation. The quest for truth is its prayer, and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge in freedom, to serve human need, this do we affirm and come with each other. Please. seated. Our reading today are the lyrics by Randy Newman from You've Got a Friend in Me, taken from the Pixar's Toy Story. And Nick told me to ham it up. Ham it up. I don't know what that means. <laughs> You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me? When the road looks rough ahead and you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed, you just remember what your old pal said. Boy, you've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. Repeats, you've got a friend in me. You got troubles, I've got them too. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you. We stick together and we see it through. Cause you've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. And as the years go by, our friendship will never die. You're gonna see it's our destiny. You've got a friend in me. So endeth the reading. Thank you. If you will put your masks on, if you haven't already done so, and please rise in body and spirit as we sing our first hymn, Let the Beauty We Have Known, hymn number 326, in the gray hymnal, the words will also be on your screen.
Each Sunday, we take a special collection to support a nonprofit group which serves human need. During the month of May, contributions support humanitarian aid for refugees from the war in Ukraine. The International Women's Convocation is a global partnership of Unitarian and Unitarian Universalists who work for women's empowerment through UU connections around the world. It is a nonprofit group that has special consultative status with the United Nations Economic and Social Council. Our donations made to the International Women's Convocation will be administered by the Hungarian Unitarian Church. Our donations will give immediate help to families fleeing the war in, UK in Ukraine, providing transportation, shelter, food, supplies, and counseling. Please make contributions on our website or through PayPal or by text message. If you are on site, the donations box is to your right as you leave the worship room. In these days when compassion, fatigue is a real thing, let's make our congregation a wellspring of empathy. Please give from your hearts what you can. Thank you. Now is the moment in this service where we can connect deeply with our bodies, our minds, our souls, the ground beneath us, the world around us. And you can do this in many ways if you want to um, really feel the floor beneath your feet, if you want to, want to close your eyes, clasp your hands if you'd like, or even um, close your eyes. Um, that's it's up to you. But whatever makes you most comfortable in this moment of, of prayer and meditation. And I want to remind us that prayer is not something that I'm doing as a request to change the, necessarily the world or God, if that's something you believe in, but more about changing me and what's going on inside and perhaps even us, if these words resonate with you. Following my prayer, um, give it about a minute of silence and then you can go right into the the song. And today the, the anthem is consider that part of the prayer. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of close that portion of our service once the choir sings a, a piece by Eric Whitaker. Ever created and creative spirit of life. First, I'd, I just want to express my gratitude, my sincere thanks for being back here with dear friends, loved ones, a community from a long ago, but still deep in my heart. There's nothing quite like returning to, to family after a time away, especially when that family is held together by by beauty and art and music, sung together, created together, grounding us in this moment of history that is often filled with trials and, and lamentation. Of course, there is still so much pain happening around the world, certainly in the Ukraine, but there are wars and, and conflicts, armed conflicts happening throughout the world in Ethiopia, Myanmar, and Yemen. And my heart goes out to all of the people suffering 
from the power plays of a few. And I'm deeply troubled by the continued gun violence that we're experiencing in this country, especially when it's used as a continued tool of oppression. I, such a tragedy that happened in Buffalo yesterday, when once again we see lives taken far too early by guns, especially by somebody who used that gun as a way to add fear to communities that, that need no more fear, need no more violence, need no more, no more pain. The sin of white supremacy is deep in the roots of this country, and we, we together, both in our beautiful action and the beauty of song and music, we fight that oppression every day, pushing us ever closer to justice, to a world filled with compassion and respect, and to a world that we shape together a world of beloved community.
Amen, blessed be, and may we sing gently as one. Music has always been an important part of my life. It's been at the heart of, of most of my memories going back to when I was very young, at the heart of community, at the heart of human connection. My dad was the band director at a small high school near where we lived. I remember often being in the band room when I was about, about two. I know, I know I was less than three beca- uh, for sure because my dad retired while we still lived at my first house and we moved from that house to our new house when I was three. So, um, and my mom still lives there. Otherwise, I, I don't know that I would know exactly what age I was. Everything in this band room seemed kind of, kind of magical and cool. I remember playing, you know, uh, getting up on the, on the little stage in the band room and, and playing on the drum set really loud and kind of messing around with all the instruments, usually percussive, that were strewn about this room. It wasn't very organized and that was okay. And I also remember how close of a community my dad had there, a community that, that still has deep connection to my mom and my family almost 25 years after my dad died and 40 since he retired. Even from an early age, I could see, I could feel that music was, was a community creating thing. It was magical how, how these sounds sometimes feel good and sometimes bad, sometimes happy, sometimes sad, but always making you feel. Yet even more so, I saw how creating sound beauty together fuels the connection of people. I've seen this over and over again in my life. Jenea, my spouse, is here today with me, and it's her first time in New York City, so she's been living it up this last week. She she mentions frequently um, that I I know everybody from my hometown, and of course I don't. Yet, when we spend time in my hometown of Peoria, Illinois, and we're you know doing whatever errand, going to the grocery store, uh, going to the local high V uh, store, and inevitably, I will run into somebody that I know. And almost universally, it's because of music, because of the high school music programs that I was a part of, because of the community theater programs where I played trumpet to make some money when I was growing up, or because of the very close-knit community of music educators that, that were lifelong friends of my parents long before I existed. Most of these friends, these lifelong family friends, play in the Peoria Municipal Band, one of the oldest surviving municipal bands in the country, a band that's been financed by city funds for almost 150 years. It might actually be the oldest. I think it's either oldest or second oldest in the country. And this is a really amazing thing for, for a, a community the size of Peoria, which is not, it's not tiny, but um, you know about 115,000 people in, in Peoria. Now, I grew up in a city 
that has for nearly its entire history backed up its value to, to present bi-weekly musical events during the summer months and, and shared public spaces to enhance community and connection. A community grounded in music, a sound bedrock of beauty. And it's such a cool thing that I have close friends from that, from that part of my life, my family's life. I have great memories from my time growing up as a youth with, with both, both of my parents were members of this band for decades. I would dance to tunes as kids, uh, as a kid, watching the, uh, the uh, annual July 3rd fireworks show, which terrified me as a kid. Being enamored by this old band shell by a lake with a, a big fountain that, that shot up about 100 feet. And then when I got older, I got to play in the band myself as a trumpet player, no longer afraid of the fireworks. And just, just the kind of cool connections and reconnections that have been made throughout life because of music, because of this organization, the beauty of music nurtured as it nurtures community. I think back on some of the things I've heard from, from musicians and music educators that I admire and respect as to why, why live music, whatever genre it may be, rock, rap, classical, why it's such a powerful experience. One might even say a spiritual experience. Because there's nothing really like doing a thing, experiencing a thing together especially when human creativity is the thing. You add more and more people, and it's kind of a feedback loop that makes everyone's experience a little more potent, a little more powerful. And that is absolutely the case, even more so the case when you create the thing together, when you create music together, when you, when you nurture the beauty of sound, of organized sound in time with one another. That's what really connects me to you all, especially to the lovely and loving people in the choir. I found Unitarian Universalism for myself, as Richard said, becoming a, a church musician here at Shelter Rock back in 2007. 15 years ago, and it was music that brought me into the UU fold, or, or perhaps UU unfolding is more accurate. <laughs> and it's music that connects me so deeply with so many people here in this room. The hugs I got this morning, ah, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. Every time I see somebody I hadn't seen for years, I just, you know, that, that draw to connect. The creation of music, nurturing beauty together, is what binds and rebinds us in a very special way. It is indeed at the heart of my religion. Music has been at the heart of faith and mythos for millennia. It's nothing new. While Jenea and I have been in New York this week, we, have had the, we had the great privilege of, of attending Hades Town on Broadway. What a great show if you have the, the time and means to see it. Hades Town is a modern retelling of the Greek Orpheus and Eurydice tragedy. The story, if you don't already know it, is about a man gifted by the gods, by the muses, with epic levels of songwriting skills. Singer-songwriter type. He uses those skills to rescue his love, who was is, who is taken to the underworld, hell, by Hades. I'm not going to give you the whole plot, but in short, it doesn't turn out very well. And yet, the musical ends on a hopeful note. We were especially moved by the show-ending song with, with lyrics which, during this moment of history, especially with the news from Buffalo yesterday, are especially poignant. All right, it's an old song. It's an old tale from way back when. It's an old song, and that is how it ends. That's how it goes. 
Don't ask why, brother, don't ask how. He could have come so close. The song was written long ago. And that is how it goes. It's a sad song. It's a sad, sad, sad tale. It's a tragedy. It's a sad song. But we sing it anyway. Because here's the thing, to know how it ends and still begin to sing it again, as if it might turn out this time. I learned that from a friend of mine. See, Orpheus was a boy, but he had a gift to give. He could make you see how the world could be in spite of the way it is. On a sunny day, there was a railroad car and a, a lady stepping off a train. Everybody looked and everybody saw that spring had come again. Even though it's a sad song at the end of a sad story, the hope is in us singing again and again until we return to spring together. And so I thought for today that creating music with everyone here, albeit much more joyful music than the sad songs of Greek tragedy, there would be a really good ritual to do to reconnect us. Reconnect me to you, reconnect you all to together. I know that it's, you're only recently back together here. And even if you're not a musician or if you think you can't sing or you're not a, a singer, we're all going to sing together today. And I do strongly believe that everyone can sing. We're going we're gonna to practice making music together. And don't worry, you'll have help. The quartet is going to help out a little bit, but even if it doesn't go perfectly, spoiler alert, it won't. The point is in practicing it together. So I've asked some of, some of my friends, who are the solos in the choir, to help out a little bit and come on up. And uh, this song that we're going to practice together today is written by David Neches, who's the music director at the, uh, the church where I'm the minister, the Unitarian Universalist Church of Augusta, Georgia. And, uh, and I think by doing this today, I'm kind of bringing relationships full circle. Because I do not believe that I would be a minister if not for the relationships I formed here at Shelter Rock. While nurturing beauty, I am grounded by you, centered by the beauty that we share and have shared. I'm grounded by the sound beauty of community. So I'm going to I'm going to ask for some music to be put up on the screen that the tech team was very nice to add for me this morning. I know it's kind of small. The word we'll teach you the words, so don't worry about seeing those so much and you can kind of see the shape of the of the music. So even if you can't see it the details perfectly, I think it'll be okay. And uh, there are three verses, which I'll sing, but there, after each verse, the chorus will do together in parts. So uh, right now, we're going to teach you all the, uh, the parts. All right, so. Can you hear me from over here? Is it okay to put this in the house? All right. So, first, let's have, I'm going to have the choir as one of them. Mm. <laughs> I sound good. <laughs> um, I'm going to have the choir sing the melody part with me, okay? And that's the, the, the bit in the middle. And just a, a, a quick word to the choir, everywhere where it says peace, sing faith. That's, that's a small change that you all look at. Okay. Faith. Faith. Faith instead of peace. Okay. So, uh, just me and choir for now. We're going to sing the melody part. Um, would you give me that? Um, FB? Uh huh. Just a Right? 
You want to do it again, or you feel good? You got it? All right. That's the melody part. You're not singing that part. <laughs> so on, to my left, we have the lower part, the harmony two. And basically, this half of the, of the congregation is going to sing with them. Um, let's do it without guitar for a second first. Um, and just give them their, their first pitch. Why don't you listen to them sing it first, and then they'll do it a second time and you'll all sing it with them. Does that sound good? Everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. Sing a song of joy. One of those words works. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do that again. And why don't you all sing with them this time? Let's, let's do this twice, just so you really feel comfortable with it. So, and, and let's use the love version. Mm -hmm. Ready? <gasps> Everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. Sing a song of love. One more time, one more time. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. Sing a song of love. Excellent. Very good. We should join the choir. <laughs> All right, this side, we're going to do harmony one. Okay, so this is basically everyone who is sitting in this row and the few folks that are sitting over here. Um, so let's, let's hear uh, your, your lovely soloist sing it first, and then we'll have you join in, just like we did with Harmony 2. All right? Everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. Sing a song of love. Good. All right, let's do it. Let's do it together, y'all. Two, two times through. Okay. Everyone is welcome. Whatever rock that works for you. that feeling? Let's, let's do all three parts together now. All right? <laughs> It'll be okay. You'll be fine. <laughs> and, and again, if it's not perfect, it's the beauty of doing it together that matters, okay? All right. Three, four. Three, four. Everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. Okay, so Grace and I will do some, some, uh, some verses in between, and we'll give you a big old cue. Oh, I should teach them the end, shouldn't I? Yeah. There's a whole other part. <laughs> Life just throws you surprises. <laughs> it wasn't a surprise for me, but it is for you. Okay. Let's go to the... the oh, thank you. You all are amazing. All right, so we're going to go to the optional ending here, and uh, let's start with you all first. Um, harmony one, this side. That top line. Um, let's you just give it a try with without guitar first. Sure. Um, listen to them, and there we go. Sing a song of joy. Sing a song of faith. Sing a song of love. Good. With them. Here we go. Sing a song of joy, sing a song of faith, sing a song of love. 
And I believe later on you'll cue when that note changes, right? Cool. Um, speaking of you, let's do this part. Harmony two. This this section here. Sing a song of joy. Sing a song of faith. Sing a song of love. Good. <laughs> all right, y'all together now. And yes, I do say y'all now. I live in Augusta. <laughs> Sing a song of joy, sing a song of faith, sing a song of joy. Good, you feeling comfortable? Yeah. Comfortable-ish? All right, cool. All right, choir with me. Sing a song of joy, sing a song of faith, sing a song of love. Good, and everyone look at him later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shall we do it? Shall we do it together? Yeah. All right, and don't be surprised if at some point Grace stops playing guitar when we're just singing. I think that'll be a kind of a fun part, all right? All right, here we go. As we gather in the circle, we raise our voices strong, welcoming all peoples as we sing along. We extinguish the flame. No. Sorry. Just stay up here with me. I sure will. Just a few closing words from the Reverend Victoria Safford. We're here to sing our love of life and one another, to sing awake our joy, which is not the same as happiness, but something even better. That awareness that life is brief and it's a gift.
We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again.